Hello, my name is Andrew Carapiard. I'm from Media Friendly and I'm a former BBC television producer from National News. This is a presentation, it's called The Secrets of Media Training. One of the issues is that if you haven't ever worked with the media before, there is a fear factor. I'm here to tell you, don't be scared. It's very straightforward. There are only two reasons why you should ever engage with the likes of me, a journalist. Those two reasons are this. One is crisis, when something goes wrong and the media come to you and you have to react to the media. The other reason is success. When you've done something right, when you, it's a new product, it's a new launch, it's a new initiative and you are being proactive. The media won't automatically come to you, but you actually go to them. So there are two completely separate techniques for doing these two completely different kinds of media interviews. Let me start with the nicer one first, the success. So if you're in success message mode, if you're being proactive, the technique is very simple. It's as easy as A, B, C. The first part of the A is answer the question. Now you may have noticed it's not what the politicians do. And the public don't trust them anymore. So I don't think they're doing it right. Don't copy them. Just because you see politicians being interviewed on the television day in, day out, doesn't mean to say they're getting it right. With the MP scandal, but even before the MP's expenses scandal, the public were not voting at general elections in the same numbers as they've done in the past. So I think what the politicians do wrong is they ignore the question and just shout and just say what they want to say. So the public are not silly. They can see through that. The best thing about you is you are not politicians. You are real people trying to do some good work. So the public will instinctively trust you. The first thing I want to say to you is you answer the question. However, if you only answer a journalist's question and do nothing else, that doesn't work either. And I'll tell you for why. Because what you were then doing is you were following the journalist's agenda. Now, if you follow a journalist's agenda, the story in tomorrow's paper is not what you want to see, it's what the journalist writes, it's what the editor of the newspaper wants to see. And your interview will simply be like slotting in the last two pieces in a 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle. So you won't have changed anything. So you have to be assertive with a small a and try and take control with a small c of any media interview in which you participate. That's why you need steps b and c. So step B is a bridge. A bridge is simply a link to get you from the A bit to the C bit. And the C stands for communicate. So what do I want you to communicate? Well, I would like you to have done a bit of preparation first. So what you need is you need three key messages. Three key messages which have the wow factor, which are interesting, which are significant, which are newsworthy. I don't want to hear jargon or public sector speak. I've been on so many interviews where we keep hearing the same key messages like it's all about partnership working, it's all about service delivery, it's all about stakeholder involvement, it's all about sustainability. The public switches off, you know, it doesn't engage them. Let me give you an example of three really good key messages I heard fairly recently, a couple of years ago. I was talking to a group of people from the Stop Smoking lobby. This was to do with the ban on, on smoking in public places, the legislation which came in on the 1st of July 2007. The three key messages were as follows. Number one, most important day in public health for 60 years, since the Clean Air Act cleaned up the smog from big cities like London, Liverpool, Birmingham, Manchester. Number two, we're going to save thousands of lives. Thousands of people die from lung cancer caused by passive smoking. With a simple piece of legislation, we're going to save thousands of lives every year. Number three, even the smokers support the ban. 70% of smokers in the UK support the smoking ban. Three good reasons why it's a jolly good idea. When I heard this, I looked at the person speaking to me and I gave him the royal bow like this. I was hugely impressed. And then I thought, what was good about this? How can I bottle this and take it round with me on training courses I do, uncork the bottle, let the magic genie out? And I thought of two tests to apply to your key messages. The same two tests I used to apply to your press releases when I used to receive them and I used to bin 90% of them, unfortunately, because they, they weren't newsworthy. The first key test for me for a key message is what I call the so what test. The so what test does what it says on the tin. So let's look at the first couple of messages. Most important day in public health for 60 years, tick. 
Yes, that's certainly part of the so what test. Saving thousands of lives every year, arguably even more important, so a second tick. The third message is very interesting. 70% of smokers support the smoking ban. It surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. I would have thought 70% of smokers would not support the smoking ban. The reason they do is because at any one moment in time, 70% of smokers want to give up, but they can't because they're hooked on a very addictive drug called nicotine, which is as addictive as a class A drug as heroin. So the third message surprised me. So I think in addition to um, passing the so what test, occasionally you've got to try and surprise me in one of your key messages. Tell the journalists something they haven't heard before and I promise you they'll be very interested. So the three key messages have to have the wow factor. So you answer my question, you bridge, you communicate one, not all three, one of your key messages in every answer you give regardless of the question being asked. So you drip feed these three key messages into a three minute interview. If possible, repeat the first one a couple of times for emphasis so the journalist actually remembers that. So this ABC is one technique. Another technique is when you're in crisis. And by crisis, I mean a very serious crisis. So for example, if three people die in your local hospital from the superbug, from MRSA, basically the media blames the hospital because the perceived wisdom is that it's your fault. Because if you keep your wards clean, you don't get MRSA. Now we all know it's not quite as simple as that, but that's why it's a very tricky crisis interview. So my formula for dealing with these kind of crisis interviews is very straightforward. The three R's, regret, reason, remedy. It does what it says on the tin. Let me show you how to answer the question. If a journalist says to the medical director of your local hospital the next day after this incident has happened, after three people have died from MRSA, how could this possibly happen? Surely you've been negligent. Why haven't you resigned yet? This is what you should say. You don't simply answer the question by saying, this is what happened. You take a step back. You express regret. You may want to say, can I first of all say, that everybody in our hospital, in our team, is devastated at what's happened. The first thing I want to do is to convey our sincere condolences to the families of three people who have died under our care, under our watch, in our hospital last night. So that's the regret bit. Then you go to the second bit, the reason or explanation, and you may want to say, now let me answer your question. Let me give you the facts. You said some very strong things in your intro You've accused us of negligence and you've called for my resignation. Let me give you the facts. Yes, as you correctly reported, three patients have died in our local hospital last night. The cause of death is not yet known. I repeat, not yet known. So you've jumped the gun, you've jumped to a conclusion. So what we've done, and this is the third R, is we've launched an investigation, the remedy, to try and find out what actually happened. Not just us, the health and safety executive, who are an outside independent body, they have also launched an investigation. So as we are speaking, there are not one, but two investigations underway. You might want to add something else as far as the remedy is concerned. You might want to also say, what we've also done is we've isolated the ward. We don't know what the problem is at this stage. We do know where the problem is. So that's what we've done. Let me also address this issue about MRSA since you brought it up. The facts are these. Four out of five cases of MRSA are brought into hospitals from outside, sometimes by visitors who don't wash their hands properly, and in some cases, in some cases by the patients themselves. So what we've done, purely as a short-term measure, purely to reassure our patients and reassure the public, I've set a limit on the number of visitors per patient to two for a very short period of weeks until we find out what's happened. Finally, on our website, on ourhospital.nhs.uk, every 24 hours we will update you as to how each of these two investigations are proceeding because we want to be open with the public. We want to be open with everyone as to what we're doing. So it's regret, it's reason, it's remedy, and that equals a fourth R, reassurance. The whole point of this is to reassure the public, to reassure everyone who wants to visit your hospital. I've been Andrew Carapiat from Media Friendly. Thank you very much for listening to me.